Hello everyone. Turkey Informatics Summit English Extra is continuing with the second on the last session. In this session, we will be with Sunnet Cognition Head of Data Operations, Virginia Puccio. Hello, Virginia. How are you? I'm good, Kise. How are you? Yes, I'm good too. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions to our guests, you can ask them on YouTube live chat. Now I'm giving the floor to Virginia Puccio. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to share my screen here. Are you able to see this? Yes, it's perfect. Great. Thanks, Kise. All right. So first, I want to say thank you to Medipol University and the Management Information Society uh, for having me here today. And also to uh, Sila and Kise for helping put this together uh, and Dr. Professor Gokhan for inviting me. Um, so we will, without further ado, jump right in. Um, so this is what we're going to go over today. Uh, what is standard cognition? Uh, we're going to answer these questions. Uh, what is required of a company that's developing an AI product? Uh, what is the type of data do we, uh, I'm sorry, what is the data development process? Uh, what type of data do we need? And how do we develop data? So we're going to give a, an overview of data operations management. So uh, let's jump in. Uh, what is standard? Um, so we have basically created an artificial intelligence product for retail. It's autonomous checkout. Um, you can walk into a store, take things off the shelf. You can put them in your bag, your purse, your pocket. Uh, you can even eat them. And as you walk out, it charges you for the things you took. You don't have to stand in line. You don't have to scan a single item. You just walk in, take things, and walk out. So I'm going to show you a quick video a uh, very short video of what this looks like. And in this video, you're going to see, uh, this is actually a video we called I'm late for class. So I thought it would be, um, perhaps some of you might be able to relate to this. Uh, it, this is a uh, micro market that we have inside of a, the engineering building at the University of Houston. So the, this micro market gets a lot of students who are coming in very quickly to get something either before class, um, after class, between classes, they need some snacks, some nourishment. And so they come in and uh, they, um, uh, you know, grab their things and go. So you can just watch this really short, short clip here. You can see these guys are running to get their food, all they do is check in on the app, on their phone, or they can scan at, uh, when they walk in, they grab their things and they leave. It's that fast. So this is the product that we've developed using artificial intelligence. All right, so uh, next one. All right, what is required of an AI company? So that's what we're going to answer next. So being a company that is creating an artificial intelligence product, um, you re really have to be three companies in one. You have to be a SaaS company, a software as a service company, and that's where our go-to-market team comes into play to figure out uh, you know, all of the ins and outs of being a SaaS company. You have to be a deep mind research company. So we are so cutting edge, so innovative, and doing something that's so new and so different that there are problems that come up that have never been solved yet, that have never, that we're still working on figuring out how to solve these problems with building artificial intelligence. Um, and so that's where, uh, you know, we, we have our um, uh, engineering team come in. They're constantly doing their own research, their own experiments. They're, they're looking for uh, experiments and research that's being done at the university level uh, that are being done at other companies. And they're, they're consistently um, working on that, that deep mind research. Um, and then the last piece is that you have to be a data development company. And so those are, um, that's what we're gonna focus on today because that's what data operations focuses on. Um, and so those companies, there are, you know, different types out there. You might uh, know of some really big ones that you may have heard of, like Scale AI or Figure 8 
um, some of these bigger ones uh, that that you may have heard of. And we have to be that we have to utilize those type of companies and be that type of company. Uh, so uh, what is the data development process? That's what we're going to go through now. So uh, data development consists of three main areas, data collection or creation, a little bit of both, data annotation, and data verification. And so if we jump deeper into each of those, data collection is using available data, that's the collection piece, and generating new data, that's the creation piece, that mimics the type of information your system is going to be working with. Um, data annotation, that's labeling that data in a way that is meaningful to train and teach your system what it needs to know in order to make appropriate choices. And then data verification is once the system has made its own decisions, because remember the system's making decisions about when those people walk in and out and take things and leave, the system is doing all of that itself. So it has to make uh, its own decisions and we have to review those decisions to be certain that the decisions are appropriate and without bias. And this is important because, um, you know, uh, if just as a human can have bias, uh, humans are writing these programs. And um, sometimes we accidentally put bias in there when we write them. And also sometimes we just don't realize. We're going to go into bias a little bit in, in this um, presentation. Uh, so that you can understand a little bit about what we're talking about. But it is important that we don't have bias because it, it makes for less correct uh, decisions. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what type of data we need. So data must mimic the type of information your system is going to be working with. So we'll take some examples here. <clears throat> In the autonomous checkout, standard cognition, what we do. You need data on people. So all types of people, if you think about in a shopping environment, people are coming in. In the video alone, you saw men, you saw a woman. People, you know, can be tall, they can be short, they can be wide, they can be thin, they can be uh, dark skin and very light skin. Uh, we need all types of, of information. They can have facial hair, they can have long hair, they can have the opposite of any of those things, right? So we need data on all different types of people. The next thing we want to look at is behaviors. If you think about for this particular application, autonomous checkout, what types of behaviors will people be doing? If you think about your own shopping trip, you may take something off the shelf. You may look at it before you put it in your bag or your basket. Uh, you may turn it around and read a label. You may take a second one and look at them both, put one back. You might be carrying a, a basket. You might be pushing a cart. There are all different kinds of behaviors that we need to look at as well. Um, I've only named you know, just a few here. And then the last thing is products. So um, the, the system has to understand what products that people are taking in order to, to charge them appropriately. So um, you know, it, there are clever ways that we can teach the system about products. Because if you think about it, you might be saying, wow, there are so many products in the world. You're going to teach the system every single product. Well, there are clever ways that we can do this, which again, we won't be able to dive into today, but there are, it, it does need to get done. And those, there are clever ways for us to do this. Um, let's take uh, an, a, an example of something that is not autonomous checkout, just so that we can broaden our perspective a bit. So automatic speech recognition. Imagine that you are calling in <clears throat> uh, to your um, health insurance uh, or some sort of um, um, your cell phone carrier, something you're having some sort of technical difficulty. Well, at least in the United States, a person doesn't pick up the phone. You are directed to a, a telephone uh, robot, basically. And instead of pressing buttons, now a lot of times we're speaking. So in this case, uh, the, the system would need to understand language and also dialect. I mean, if you think about, um, you know, language, uh, there may be, say you speak Arabic, but which Arabic do you speak? Aside from modern standard Arabic, there are about 30 different dialects of Arabic. And some, you cannot understand them at all, one between the other, right? 
Another thing that the system would need to understand and data we would need to provide it with would be on sort of colloquialisms. Are there little sayings that are said in your, in your country that are different uh, or in your area and your region that might be different from other parts of the world or other areas that speak your same language? Slang, um, different types of slang that might be very common use um, and accents. So even, you know, let's just use within the United States, um, we have a lot of different accents. Uh, we all speak English, we all speak American English, uh, but for example, I'm on the West Coast in California. And so I speak with a West Coast accent. Uh, and there may be, you know, there's a Southern accent. And even within the Southern accent, they sound very different. Um, there's the East Coast accent, and there are several East Coast accents. Um, we may have the same word, but it sounds very different. Uh, I'll give you an example. I have a very good friend. He is from Tennessee. And we you, we say the word oil, like olive oil, right? O-I-L. He says ol, ol. That might sound very different to uh, a system that it doesn't understand. It might be difficult for me to understand what he's saying because it's pronounced so differently. And then the last thing you might need to teach um, or, or maybe not even the last thing, but another example that you'd need to teach an automatic speech recognition, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, would be terminology. So in the industry-specific terminology, there are going to be very different terminology if you call into, say, you know, the medical device or medical company that I mentioned, a healthcare company, and, and your cell phone company. We're going to use very different terminology. So... Um, again, that data must mimic the type of information your system will be working with. Um, and notice here, I said information. So this is the next thing we're going to talk about. And I do, before we move forward, uh, I want to mention that um, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't give uh, uh, some credit to my friend and colleague, uh, Eran Shlomo. He is the uh, founder and uh, co-founder and CEO of Data Loop, um, and uh, they they are actually one of our vendors. Um, and uh, he he is writing a book. Iran is writing a book, um, the very first book on data operations management. Um, he's a brilliant guy, and uh, and a lot of of this of this next piece that I'm going to show you, I, I learned from him. So um, what is data versus information? So uh, in order to illustrate this point, um, we're going to talk about dogs. Imagine if you had to teach a system about dogs and you wanted the, the system to understand dogs. It needed to identify dogs and recognize dogs for whatever reason, whatever application you were using it for. So to illustrate this, I've put up some pictures of my dog. And uh, her name is Amika. And as you can see, she's very cute. And she's doing a lot of different things in these pictures. Uh, she's she's a, a, a pretty large, about 70 pound uh, German Shepherd mix. And as you can see, you know, she's mostly brown with a little black on her back. And it, she has, she's in different things here. She's, you know, one, she's standing on this little pink couch. The other, she's wearing her, her running outfit at, when we go running at night. It's a reflective and warm vest. She's on the front porch. We were just getting home from the run. Uh, and you can see, you know, in some of the pictures, her ears are up, in others, her ears are back. Uh, there are different angles of her. You know, one, I woke up in the morning and she was in the fourth picture, just looking at me in the face on the bed. I didn't know, even know she was there. Um, and then the last one, she's out on the grass in our backyard and she has a flower in her ear. So my point of all this is I could show you and, and you and also the, the system, if we're trying to learn about dogs, thousand pictures of my dog in doing various things. You can see she's doing lots of different things in these pictures, uh, but I'm not doing a very good job of giving the system very much information about dogs. Um, unless I give the, the system thousands of pictures of many dogs. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, if I, if I, there is a difference between data and information. And the difference is uh, that data can, if you give a lot of data, you still may not be giving a lot of information. And so it's important to give uh, as much information as possible to the system. So let's talk then about how we develop the data. 
So here's what we do. Um, because we've created an artificial intelligence product for retail, uh, we we constantly need, and even if you were doing back to the, the same um, voice recognition, you know, automatic uh, speech recognition, not voice, re voice recognition, um, you would need to collect a lot of data um, first. Uh, this is the continuous integration model for deep learning. So the first thing you knew, do is collect all of that data. So you may collect some of it from your customers, uh, you know, uh, walking around in the store, uh, you may have people walk around in the store and have them do specific tasks. And then you may also um, uh, create data. You create your own data. So you collect some, you create some. We determine, okay, we've got quite a bit of data now. Let's label it. That's where a company like a, a data loop might come in and label a bunch of data for you. Um, and then once we've labeled the data in a way that we think is appropriate, I, I go like this because there are actual little labels on the data that you know tell we tell it what we want it to know, what we want it to learn. Then we feed that into the models. <clears throat> we train the models with it. We teach the models uh, about the data we've collected and specifically how we've labeled it. So we teach it exactly what we want it to know. And then when the models are finished being trained, they make decisions. And from there, we determine if those decisions are correct or not. How correct were they? Uh, when we're looking at how correct they were, we also want to look at, you know, was there any bias? Were there, was there any model drift? Did it know something? Drift means it maybe knew something at one point. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it became, uh, it got so much information that maybe it, it started to drift away and not understand. Uh, it got too much information at once. Um, bias might be, let's use the, the example of the dog. Uh, most dogs around the world may be brown. Um, uh, and maybe, you know, there are quite a few black dogs too, but white dogs are, are less common. And so it, the model may have trouble identifying white dogs, maybe particularly if they're small. If it's small and it's white, uh, it mistakes it with a cat. Uh, it doesn't think it's a dog because it's so small. I I'm just giving an example here. I don't, I don't know if any of these statistics are true <clears throat> or if this actually happens. But we have to look and see uh, to verify the decisions that it's making. Is there any bias? Is there any drift? And what are the edge cases? In my, the example I just used, white dogs might be an edge case. And so we might need to go out and the cycle starts again. Collect as much data as we can on white dogs label that data, retrain the models, let it make decisions, and then verify how those decisions are, how appropriate are they, uh, and are they without bias. So this is the constant iterative process. It's a continuous integration for deep learning. And uh, so what I've done today in the last you know, 20 minutes or so is just give you a, an overview of, um, of data operations management, very high level overview. Um, again, I wanna thank you, uh, thank the Metapol University for having me um, and, uh, and also for all of you for being here with me today, uh, spending your time with me. I also wanna tell you that um, we are hiring at Standard uh, we um, uh, just is secured a third uh, Series C funding, another round of funding, and um, so we're going to be hiring. Please go to standard.ai uh, slash careers. Keep looking back because we are adding more um, uh, openings all the time, and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I very much enjoy um, having uh, meaningful connections. So again, thank you for having me, uh, Sila. Gise, uh, Dr. Gokhan, I appreciate it very much. Uh, can you can you stop sharing it, please? Change the screen. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was very clear and understandable. Now, um, I actually I have a question. Uh, as you mentioned, um, how we can find and how we get news from standard cognition on social media on Twitter, on Instagram, or in LinkedIn? Oh, yes, yes uh, we are on LinkedIn, on Instagram. Uh, and and I believe we even have Facebook. Okay, so if 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 we just write standard cognition, we will.
find it. You will find us. That's right. And now I'm I'm looking to you to publish it, and I can't see any questions. So, um, do you want to add anything else? No, that's all. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Um, thank you for your time and presentation. It was really good and helpful for us. We are very happy to have you in Turkey Informatics Summit. Take care. Thank you. Bye. 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 Um, the last session of Turkey Informatics Summit English Extra has ended. This was the last day of Turkey Informatics Summit. But one more time, I want to thank uh, Management Information Society President Salas Altoğlu and also backstage manager Ömer Saadettin Şengil, all of our guests, all of our audience, and our main sponsor Nasle. Thank you again. I wish you all a good evening. Thank you for your attention.